So it's obviously not the result you wanted last time out. Give me an idea what it took to kind of move past that, kind of, you know, just get beyond what happened last time out. I mean, it, it, it's rough still. You know, it's rough thinking about that because, I mean, that was such a big opportunity. If I win that fight, you know, I've talked to a lot of trash leading up to that fight, obviously, too. But if I win that fight, I'm, I, you know, the way he wanted, I'm over that superstar. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm making probably crazy money at that point and, and, and big opportunities coming up. But I got another big opportunity, so I'm optimistic. You know, this is a big co-main event spot on ESPN. The first main card on ESPN, so it's it's a big spot, you know. Um, I don't dwell on the past as far as like, you know, my future results. I, I've lost fights before, and I've came back like it was nothing. And the, I lost an Ultimate Fighter. I lost a Benel Darius a few years ago, and I've had really good streaks since then. You know, I, that's people who take a loss and, and get uh, get messed up over that is just mentally weak, in my opinion. I know what a student of the game you are, so I kind of wonder what lessons you took out of that. I mean, was it just tactical or was it something mental? Because you said, I mean, there was a lot of trash talk. That, that was a really tense week and a tense fight. So when you look back, was it a tactical area that you made in the cage or was it something with the mentality of the whole fight? It was for sure tactical. Like I saw a lot of people, uh, even some of the commentators, they were like, oh, well, Vic looks nervous in this fight. I mean, I wasn't nervous at all. I, honestly, I think that's becoming a problem for me is I'm not nervous. I don't know how to be nervous at this point in my career, to be honest with you. I've had, because I think because my whole career has been in the UFC. You know, I was only four and oh when I got in the UFC and I only been pro for about seven, eight Eight months when I got on the Ultimate Fighter, so um, uh, it basically it was tactical. You know, I got I let my back get too close to the cage, and I didn't have anywhere to circle out to. And he, you know, it was more of what he did right than what I did wrong. You know, with the exception of me, you know, obviously being too close to the cage, and you know, I didn't change anything. I went and fixed those, made those adjustments as best I could, but I didn't, you know, I didn't change any, anything besides that. And then I wonder when when you got this offer. I mean, I know you always kind of felt like maybe you weren't getting the respect you deserve, but to be coming off a loss. To get a matchup with a high-profile guy, for it to be in a high-profile card against me, I mean, did it feel good? Did it feel like maybe, hey, the, the company's still showing some faith in me? For for sure, for sure. And I talked to Sean Shelby, you know, after my loss, and he was like, you know, he's like, it happens to everybody, James. He's like, just you know, uh, shake it off. We'll get you a matchup when we can, a good matchup. And I'm, um, you know, it's it's a it's a privilege, you know, honor to be fighting on ESPN. I grew up watching Friday night fights since I was a kid, you know, and to get the opportunity to fight on this. And you know, Felder's not ranked above me, but he, but with, some, with the exception of. I'm probably not going to get anyone ranked above me for this fight, maybe even the next. So I can't ask for a better name value. He brings name value to the to the bout. So it, it's really a, a, a privilege for me to be in this position for sure. The last thing for me, I mean, I think a lot of people are looking at this on paper and saying, well, this could be a really, really fun fight. But, I mean, are you approaching it that way? Or do you feel like, hey, man, I, I got to fight smart. I can't worry about coming in and putting on a show or being entertaining or what have you. I mean, I think it's going to be entertaining regardless of, of my strategy or his, to be honest with you, because we both want to win. We're both hungry, coming off losses, and we're both strikers, you know, and we both have decent ground games and everything, and I mean, I feel like I, I have a big edge on the ground, but I mean, his takedown defense and his get-up abilities are good enough that it, it's probably going to, you know, I'm not going to gas myself out trying to repeatedly go for takedowns on a guy when, you know, takedowns are second nature to me and not first. Um, if the opportunity presents itself, then I'll, I'll do something like that, but for the most part, it's going to be a stand-up fight, and I, I definitely think the fans are for a treat. Is there anything you can take away from his last fight? I mean, it was against a welterweight. He didn't break his arm in the first round. He ended up losing a split, like basically one arm. Yeah, basically, I mean, uh, nothing to take away just how tough he is. You know, I knew he was tough, and uh, I mean, he's not, he's not, he's known to be a warrior. You know, obviously, um, I didn't, um, I didn't even study that fight really. I watched it a couple times, basically just the first round because, I mean, what do you expect when someone has one arm? And I mean, that was impressive of him to even get a split decision loss with one arm for two rounds. Um, so I didn't even study that fight. Uh, I studied the rest of it. You know, the rest of the films I've seen of his and the fights I've seen of his, but I didn't even take that one really into consideration. What do you make of the division right now? I mean, the champion's kind of sitting out to the end of the year. Cowboy came back. Felder's back after going up to all the way for one fight. Where does the win put you in? It's, it's very cluttered at the top. Honestly, I don't know. That's what I was. That's what I was just telling the uh, audience there. Um, I don't know because. On, and this is something I said, even if I would have won the Gagey fight, that I would probably still be fighting someone right below me. The way the division's tied up, it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's complicated. You know, I understand, you know, people in the position they're in, you know, I understand, you know, someone like Cowboy, you know, getting a fight with Connor. He, you know, he's earned that, man. He's been in the UFC for, he has the most wins in UFC history. And you got guys, um, Tony Ferguson, Poirier, these guys have put in time, you know, they're not, probably not interested in fighting someone like me. I mean, I would love to, obviously, but... I just got to see, honestly, I, I, I got to get a win Sunday, obviously. And then I don't really there, I don't really see anybody ranked above me that I, that I would get that opportunity anytime soon. So with, like, Anthony Pettis is going to have to take a fight. If you, if you can't get an opponent, 
you ever leave for sure for sure if i if if at this point it's getting to the point i'm like man you know if if, if i end up if I, I mean, you know, I can't stand up because I'm coming off a loss, though. Too at the same time, you know, I can't. I'm coming off a loss, so I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get what I, what I can get. But this opportunity is big because he, he is a high-profile guy. But if I get, if I get asked to fight someone that's, that's not very high-profile next fight or something, then, then yeah, I would probably just say, move me up then. Last one for me. I think between your last fight and now, George Hawkeye was kind of three months plus, and you were like. Too much into sweets. Than yeah. When you tweeted you were giving up sweets outside of fruit. Has, have you been able to do that? It, it, it's, I mean, it's been a struggle, but it's been good. I've actually did it a lot. And, you know, I, I saw, you know, he called me out on the, the Joe Rogan podcast. George did. And, you know, George loves me. Me and him are like family. You know, I've been working with him for almost five years now or, or longer, you know. And um, we're very close. And, you know, I, I, I wasn't upset at all when he said that. I was, you know, I was, you know, I was happy, you know. It didn't, didn't bother me. And then I, I thought about, you know, I just have a son. I have a newborn son. And, you know, I'm from a southern family. We eat horrible foods. We eat so much sugar. We eat fried everything. I don't want my kid to, you know, me and my girl are pretty much on the same base with we want my kid. I want my kid to eat healthy and I don't want we don't want him to grow up with those habits that we have. So I, I have to change and I can't be one of those do as I say, uh, do as I do people. So I have to lead by example for my son as well. So it's been a challenge. It has, but not not as bad as, um, uh, especially when camp started. When camp started, I was like, you know, I'm, you know, it's 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 done, you know, and, and I did a good job with it. It's interesting hearing you talk about what I think for a while that was something maybe you resisted. Uh, is that something you started to think about now, just as a potential option? When guys moving divisions is happening more than ever. Yeah, but you also see, you know, I think there, we really need, we do need that 165 pound division, y'all, because some of us are just literally a little too small for welterweight, but a little too big for lightweight. You know what I'm saying? And, and I get it. You know, there's, uh, it's, you know, it's only, it, but it would be a 10 pound difference for me weighing in. You know, um, the thing is, you see, you see a lot of guys moving up, but you also see a lot of guys move down, like Cowboy and Anthony Madison. They realize when they got to that top echelon of people that that, that 15, 15, 20 pound weight difference means everything. They realize that it's hard for people. I, my whole career, people's like, oh, well, because you're so tall, you know, you, you, you need to you need to um, uh, move up, this and that. But it's hard to tell someone to move up when they've never missed weight one time and they've never even followed the program. They've always cheated it half the time anyway. And I've still made weight, you know what I'm saying? So it's hard to tell. You know, it's not getting easier as I get older. I, I, I'll acknowledge that, you know, and definitely, I definitely don't think if, if with 155, I, I don't have more than a, another year and a half to two years to be here for sure um uh but 165 i can make that till i'm 40 years old you know and i, I want to fight till I'm 40 so i can make that forever well, just to piggyback off that one question what have you done differently in this fight camp than you did in preparation for weight cutting for the gauge fight? i might have followed the program i followed george lockhart's program even that being said it's, it's not easy i mean it's not it's my weight got here i was i was here about three and a half pounds lighter than i was for the gauge fight so that's that's pretty good you know uh because three and a half pounds when you're at the end means everything, you know. So uh, that, that I was very happy when I got here with my weights. But I'm just following George's program. I mean, I have the best nutritionist in the world. Um, George has over 200 guys in the UFC, and I'm, you know, that's like a slap in his face. Me not me not doing what he's what, what I'm paying him to do. To be honest with you, so like a waste of my money and a waste of his time, you know. So I've decided that you know be more disciplined. Just to follow up, where do you where do you find that advantage? Just to follow up on what we were just saying about 165, I'm just curious, do you feel like that's inevitable at this point that we're eventually, at some point, going to get back? I keep hearing it, you know. I keep hearing before the end of the year. Obviously, Dana's saying no, no way. There's going to be a 165 pound division, but he always says that. So I'm, I'm optimistic, and I think a lot of us are optimistic, you know, because I, I mean, I think I can move up to 165 and be immediately ranked in the top 10. And and the, now that's another thing for 170 is is I move up, I have to start all over. It's taking me nine wins. I'm nine and two in the UFC. I mean, I have the same record in the UFC as as uh, McGregor, uh, Wonder Boy, Yoel Romero. It's taking me this long in my division because there's so many guys. Um, uh, it's taking me this long to even be ranked in the top, you know, top 10, top 15. So if I, I would have to turn around and win three or four more fights, at least three to get ranked in the top 15 at, at welterweight. So it's, it'd be like almost like starting over for me, you know. When you say there's a lot of optimism among us, I'm curious who the us is. Like, is that something that you and fellow lightweights talk about often? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, well, I see it on so I see it on social media all the time. Every, everyone campaigning for a 165 pound division. I see it. I see it all the time. You know, I follow. I stay I, I active on Twitter, especially you know a lot, and I see. I see it all the time. For sure. Strategically, where do you see your advantages? I think that I'm a better striker than him. I think I'm definitely a better grappler than him as well. But I, I mean, we're probably not going to be going to the ground. I think that. Um, 
you know, someone's, uh, I did an interview with, uh, who was it the other day? I think MMA Junkie maybe. And they were asking me, they were asking me, um, they were asking me about getting the knockout loss and everything. I said, you know what? Anytime I lose, it's probably going to be my knockout because I've never, I've, unless you get the highest of level wrestler that can hold me down, I, I'm not going to accept losing the decision. I feel like he's been outpointed multiple times. All of his fights have been lost by decision. Now, you can look at it as, oh, he's got a tough chin and he's hard to finish, or you can look at it like he didn't turn it up and, and, and do what he had to do to, to take that risk to get that win, you know? So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to lose a decision. Um, so I feel, like, I feel like I can win this fight, uh, knockout, submission, or decision. I feel like the only way he has to win this fight is, is a big shot like Gaethje landed uh, is, is a, by knockout. So, because of that, are you, are you looking to, to be more on the outside and middle range as opposed to the inside range? Well, I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm an outside fighter. You know, I'm a counter fighter. I'm, I mean, I am who I am, you know. I'm, uh, so, I'm always, I'm always fighting. Uh, you know, I'm always looking to be on the outside, and the goal is to hit and not get hit. But, I mean, I know if I have to bite down that mouthpiece, you know, it, I, I'm game for that. I've always been game for that. And um, we get inside the clinch. Both of us are probably going to be throwing knees and elbows and stuff as well. So, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sure I'm going to try to keep it on the outside. I'm sure he's going to obviously try to get inside. So it's probably going to be a, bit, a mixture of both. Is the, is the shave head? Is that the look going forward? Or? Okay, well, here's the thing. So I was getting thin, I'm getting thin on top, and uh, after the Gaethje fight, I was getting so much back, backlash anyway because I talked so much crap. So I went home the next day, and I was like, I'm done. I shaved it. I was like, I'm not going to be that dude trying to hold on to his hair. <laughs> so I'm done. Myself. And see, I eased him into it. See, I'm, right now I'm just doing the, 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 bare, the bare metal razor part right. or the, 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 the metal, uh, the electronic one. Right. Then I'm going to slowly go with the actual razor. I'm easing them into it. Look, look, look. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I didn't choose this life; it chose me. But, I, but you got you got to go with it, you know. I, I'm not going to be that dude trying to hold onto his hair. <laughs> Thank you guys.